In this paper, two people with tetraplegia, that is two people who were unable to move their arms or their legs in any functionally useful way, were able to control a prosthetic or a robotic arm simply by thinking about the movement of their own paralyzed hand. And they did that using the investigational BrainGate neural interface system. So they thought about using their own arm and hand as though they were reaching out themselves with their own limb, and the robotic arm moved much the way their own arm would have moved. One of the long-standing questions, not only in neuroscience, but in neurorehabilitation, is whether the cells in the motor cortex and other parts of the brain, whether they continue to function the same way years after that original injury. It is possible for people to use their thoughts to control devices, either a computer or a robotic arm. And the way that happens is that we implant a tiny sensor, just about the size of a baby aspirin, just into the surface of the brain, and that sensor pick up the electrical impulses from a bunch of neurons. And each of those little neurons are like radio broadcast towers putting out impulses. And when they get to the outside, a computer translator converts the pattern of pulses into something that is a command. One of our participants was able to do something uh, that, when all of us saw it uh, for the first time, uh, gave us all pause. She reached out with the robotic arm, she thought about the use of her own hand, she picked up that thermos of coffee, brought it close to her, tilted it towards herself, and uh, sipped the coffee from a straw. And that was the first time in nearly 15 years that she had picked up anything and been able to drink from it solely of her own volition. There was a moment of, of true joy, true happiness. I mean, it was beyond the fact that it was an accomplishment, uh, I think an important advance in the entire field of, of brain-computer interfaces, that it was really a moment where we helped somebody do something that they had wished to do for many years. This is the culmination of more than a decade of work beginning with science at Brown University that laid the foundation for all of the translational work that led from monkeys playing video games using their thoughts to humans being able to control a cursor in 2006 to ultimately to today's accomplishments. This kind of research can only happen when institutions come together and bring together teams of scientists and engineers and physicians to work closely together to create the ultimate device, one that works 24 hours a day, seven days a week, works perfectly every time, and works for a lifetime. That's where we're all headed, and we still have some distance to get there. But to know that it's possible makes all of us quite encouraged about the future.